Have you always wanted to learn how to follow an object that never moves? I know it sounds crazy, but that's what this video is all about today. I'm going to be teaching you how to make a proportional wall follower for your Mindstorms Robot Inventor. So let's dig in. Today we're using the distance sensor, AKA the ultrasonic sensor to program your robot to follow a wall. Now it sounds a little bit crazy, but this is actually a very useful algorithm for FLL and WRO competitions because the wall on the side of the competition mat is one of the most reliable sources of locating your robot. And if you can learn how to follow the wall, well, the wall is a straight line and you can get your robot to follow a reliable straight trajectory using a proportional wall following algorithm just like the one I'm going to be showing you today. If you're not already super familiar with the ultrasonic sensor, I recommend you check out this video that I published last week. And that's a video where I go into detail about how this sensor works and what exactly it does. The algorithm that we're working on making today is called a proportional wall follow and it uses this sensor, the ultrasonic sensor, to measure distance to maintain a fixed distance from the wall. So what you do is you mount this sensor on the side of your robot facing the wall that you want to follow. For the best results, I recommend that you mount your ultrasonic sensor vertically on the side of your robot and close to one of your drive wheels, like I'm showing here. This will help your robot more accurately detect changes in distance from the wall, especially if the robot is approaching from an angle. But what does the word proportional mean in this context? So proportional is just a fancy word that describes how the robot responds to errors and its trajectory. So what you do to start is you define a target value. This is the distance that the robot must maintain between itself and the wall. And what the algorithm does is it constantly watches the distance measurements made by this sensor and it compares them to the target value. So if it happens that the target value exactly matches the measurement that is currently being made by the sensor, you're all set and the robot can just drive in whatever direction it's currently going. But inevitably the robot is going to stray off track a little bit and as soon as as the distance measurement is different from the target value, then the robot knows it needs to make a correction. Here's where the proportional part comes in. The size of the correction the robot makes is proportional to the error. That means if it's only a centimeter or two, a small number of centimeters off from the target path, the robot will make a gentle adjustment back in the right direction. If the robot is way off path, so if there's a big difference between the target distance and the actual distance on the sensor right now, then the robot knows to make a big adjustment to its trajectory. Before we dive into the code, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and measure that target value. So what you can do is connect the ultrasonic sensor to your Mindstorm's intelligent hub, power on the intelligent hub and connect it to your smart device. By the way, if you need help doing any of that, check out my quick start guide up here and that'll teach you everything. But once all of that is set up in the top right corner of the app, click the button that has a little brick icon and that'll bring you to the port view, which shows you the readout on every motor and sensor that's currently connected to your intelligent hub. I want you to click on the ultrasonic sensor and make sure the distance measurement of choice is selected and then place the robot relative to the wall where you would like it to be when it is falling its ideal distance away and make note of what this distance value is. I recommend that you use centimeters for this application. Now, I know bald eagle units are all of the rage in the United States, but there's a good reason to use centimeters over inches. That's because centimeters are smaller. There are roughly two and a half centimeters in every inch. And since the centimeter is a smaller unit of measurement, that means you're going to get a finer resolution, a little bit more more precise of a distance measurement if you use the ultrasonic sensor in centimeter mode rather than inch mode. And as soon as you've measured that target distance value, we're ready to go and start writing the code for this algorithm. I have the Mindstorms app open now and I'm ready to start walking you through the code for this proportional wall follower. Now the very first thing we want to do is we want to define a couple of variables. And these refer to two important parameters we need for tuning the proportional algorithm. So click on the orange variables tab and we'll click on make a variable. And now we're going to make a variable called target distance. This refers to the distance that you want the robot to maintain away from the wall. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but the style of the way that I wrote this is called camel case. If you're interested, you can look up more, but this is basically a good programming practice for naming variables. And then click on the okay button. 
and we want to drag out this block, which is set target distance to some numerical value. And in this little number field is where you're going to enter the distance that you want your robot to maintain away from the wall. So in my case, if I wanted it to follow six centimeters away from the wall, I would punch in the number six right there. The next variable that we're going to make is the proportional constant. So click to make another variable and you can name this however you're going to remember it. I'm going to name this KP, which is just a mathematical abbreviation for proportional constant. Basically what this value does, I'll explain it in more detail in just a minute, but this controls how sharp your robot's corrections will be when it starts straying off of the target path. So create a variable for that, and then drag out a set statement for this as well and put it right after target distance. Now, it's okay if you don't know what your KP value is at this point, I'll teach you in just a minute how to find that value. But by default, it's good practice to just set this to one. Don't set it to zero, because if you set it to zero, then your robot will never make any turns ever, and that's not fun. Next, we have to go into the movement tab and we have to define the movement speed for our robot. So drag out this block that says set movement speed to some percentage. 50% might be a little bit high to start. So personally, I'll knock this down to, oh, we'll say 35% for Builder Dude 35. And you're welcome, of course, to experiment with different moving speeds as you get more comfortable with the algorithm. After that, we're going to want to go into the control tab and drag out a loop. So this is an infinite loop, which means your robot will follow the wall forever until the wall ends and you manually stop the program. I'll have another tutorial where I explain how to break out of the loop when the time is appropriate, but that's a topic for another tutorial. And then this next line of code is really the last line of code. It's a little bit complicated, but bear with me. I'll explain all of it. Go back into the movement tab and select this block, which is start moving straight zero is the default value. But basically what this does is it lets us define a steering value from negative 100 to positive 100, define a left and right turn. And we're gonna use this to control the robot's steering when it's following the wall. You actually don't have to worry about what you type into this field right now. We're gonna plug in a little math expression into this field here that operates on the ultrasonic sensor's distance measured to calculate a correction. So with that said, we're going to go to the green operators tab and you're going to want to pull out the subtraction operator. So this is one thing minus another thing right now. And you're going to want to go into the sensor tab. Now we're going to access the current distance reading on the ultrasonic sensor. So drag this out. You can change the unit of the distance measurement to whatever you want. I actually recommend that you use centimeters for this application. Drag this into the operator block in the first position here. So what this does is it reads the current distance measurement on the ultrasonic sensor and then subtracts some other value. So what is that second value? Well, that's going to be our target path. So go into variables and you're going to want to take out this block which just has the name of the variable target distance in here and plug that into the second field. And what this new little orange block does is it reads whatever value you have stored in that variable and plugs it into that expression. So what we've done right here is we've told the robot, read the distance measurement on the ultrasonic sensor and subtract our ideal target distance away from that. And this expression here all together now gives us the error. How far away are we from the ideal distance from the wall? The next thing to do after that is get another operator block. This time we want the multiplication operator and we want to scale the error by some constant factor, the proportion constant in order to get a correction for the robot's path. So take this entire expression and put this in the second field of the multiplication. And in the first field, go back into the variables tab and drag out your named KP block and plug that into the first field. So now what we're doing is we're taking the measured error from the ideal path and we're multiplying it by the proportional constant and that controls how sharp our corrections will be. And that gives us the magnitude of the correction that we want to make when we stray off of the path. And now last but not least, take this entire expression here and drag that into the steering value field of this pink block that we have. And this is the completed code for the proportional wall follower. Now that your code is all written up, any seasoned Builder Dude 35 viewer knows that only half of the battle is done. Cause now comes the fun part, which is tuning the algorithm. Thankfully, because we've chosen to make a proportional algorithm, tuning is pretty straightforward. You only have two parameters that you need to play around with, the target distance 
and what is called the proportional constant. The proportional constant is also known as K or a gain value. Basically what it does is it controls how sharp the corrections are that the robot makes when it detects an error. So a larger proportional constant and larger I mean in terms of magnitude, so a value farther away from zero means the robot is going to make sharper turns. I recommend that you go ahead and set the proportional value to one when you're just starting out and then what you can do is observe how the robot responds to errors as it's driving around and see if it's straying too close or too far to the wall. If you find out that the robot is making really herky-jerky corrections and it's not smooth at all, that tells you the proportional constant is too high and you should consider lowering it. If, on the other hand, the robot is making really wide arcing turns and it doesn't seem to be turning hard enough to get it to keep onto the path, the proportional constant is too low and you need to make this number larger. And in the case where you find that the robot is making turns in the wrong direction, so if the robot is too close to the wall and then it makes a turn to go closer to the wall, you can negate the sign on the proportional constant. For example, if your proportional constant is already positive, change the sign of the constant to negative and now that means your robot is going to make turns in the opposite direction for each error. And once you have all of that figured out, you should have a really smooth and reliable wall follower that tracks the wall flawlessly. Thanks so much for stopping by for yet another Mindstorms lesson. If you really enjoyed this video, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because I make videos like this every single week. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Later.